I am Coach Jay, a betrayal trauma practitioner, and I always like to start my classes with a dad joke. And today's is this. Yesterday, my husband thought he saw a cockroach in the kitchen. He sprayed everything down and cleaned thoroughly. Today, I'm going to put a cockroach in the bedroom. But I'm bump. All right, if you can take two deep healing breaths with me in through the nose, out through the mouth, preferably with your eyes closed, but however you feel safe. If you have a happy place, feel free to mentally go there in through the nose, out through the mouth. All right. Uh, today, I'm going to be talking a little bit about um, the fundamentals <clears throat> of insecurity. And I want to start this class by giving you just a very broad definition of what insecurity is. Uh, insecurity, again, a broad definition, is uncertainty or anxiety, anxiety about oneself. So it's basically a lack of confidence. Insecurity can be blaringly obvious or it can be more quiet and insidious. And if you don't understand how insecurity shows up in relationships in you and your partner, if you have a partner, and you don't know what to do about it, you're guaranteed to suffer. Because um, I say it all the time, if you don't deal with your trauma, your trauma will deal with you. You don't deal with your insecurities, your insecurity is gonna deal with you. You don't deal with your lack of boundaries, your lack of boundaries are gonna deal with you. You get the gist, okay. If you are currently dating um, or open to it or even trying to reconcile and rebuild, um, insecurity will make your life um, hell for you. There's really no two, no two ways about it. It will knock your confidence, keep you from being present, and ultimately push people away, thus creating a vicious cycle. Because when you push people away, you wonder why everybody, quote, walks away from you it breeds more insecurity. You may think that you attract people who only let you down, but the rea reality is that your experiences and mer are merely a reflection of what's going on inside you. Um, so we attract that which we are. So you're likely to get into a relationship with someone who has their own unresolved insecurities. Um, I often say that we date on the level of our insecurity, which is why sometimes, um, and I know none of you judge, but I'm, no, I'm just kidding. Sometimes you'll look at a couple and you're like, oh my God, what in the world is he doing with her or vice versa? Um, and it has very little to do with, with much except oftentimes people's, in, people's um, security or lack of um, is what drives that dating force. So two people can be completely opposite in looks and everything, but they match from a security point or, a, or an insecurity point. Um, and that's where they'll start dating. Uh, once in a relationship, things quickly deteriorate between you and your uh, partner. Insecurity makes relationships anxious, tumultuous, uh, tumultuous affairs rather than the fulfilling, joyous partnership that they're supposed to be. Um, because, I mean, let's face it, when you come into a relationship and you have all these insecurities, you're putting an additional job on the other person. That additional job is help me fix my insecurities. Well, if they're coming to the relationship table also with a job for you, <laughs> you guys just basically got into the boxing match, boxing ring. So until you address insecurity within you, you'll never fully be happy with a partner. There are um, some, some signs, some subtle signs to insecurity. I'm just gonna give you three. Number one, um, uh, I just wanna tell you, insecurity is a desire for safety. That's what it is. Insecurity, you want to feel safe. You want to feel safe within your own skin. You want to feel safe within whatever it is you're insecure about. Everyone on this planet wants to feel safe. When you're insecure, you're carry, you carry an underlying fear that you aren't safe. Uh, whether it's from childhood trauma or previous romantic experiences, insecurity keeps you in a state of anxiety. This anxiety can be very mild, um, but certain situations will certainly trigger it. A lot of times... Um, uh, I mean, let's face it, we, there's so many fundamental blueprints in our childhood. Uh, I'll give you a perfect example. Um, I was a middle child. So I don't know if you ever heard of middle child syndrome, 
Um, but, you know, my old eldest sibling, it was like, you know, oh, he was the first one, the golden child. And, you know, yada, yada. My youngest sibling was the baby. And she got, you know, the rules were relaxed for her. And, you know, she was the baby. And then here I was. And no, this isn't a what was me story. But, you know, the middle child, um, I don't know if you ever heard of middle child syndrome, but it's often the one that gets most neglected um, and and not heard. So now in my marriage, I have a sensitivity to not being heard. Um, so um, so again, you don't work on your insecurities, they will work on you. Dating is an excellent trigger, unfortunately. When we're falling for someone, it's natural to fear one of uh, two things, being rejected and losing the sense of self. Like I said, um, insecurity magnifies these fears dramatically and they can show up in a number of ways. And I told you before, I'm going to give you three ways. Um, number one, you give excessive thought to what you wear, what you say, and what you don't say. Um, it's overthinking. It's over. How many times do you leave a party and you're like, oh my God, I should have said this, or why did I say this, or why did I over talk something, or, you know, did I wear this, you know, accordingly, or I should have wore the first thing. It's, you know, constantly questioning yourself and overthinking. Two, you have a tendency to fall hard and get wrapped up quickly in a relationship. Again, one of the excitements to get into a relationship for those that are insecure is this person's going to help me fix my um, insecurity. And or this person is so cool, I must be cool too. So that makes me feel more secure. But feeling anything, feelings aren't fact. And once those feelings fade, then you, you're, you're back with your raw feelings of insecurity. And then three, you get involved with people who pressure you into um, commitment or needing to be rescued. Um, a lot of times helping others boosts our, our secure, our self-esteem, our self-worth, our securities. Um, uh, but again, that could be a trap. That could be a vicious cycle. So what, what insecurity is trying to tell you? When you are insecure, here, you worry about what others may think of you. Um, you feel that they will not like you exactly as you are, which is why sometimes after the dust settles, after dating somebody, then your own insecurities kick in and you're like, how could this person really like me? Do they know who I am? A, B, and C. In short, you do not feel as if you are enough. Uh, you assign other people to be judges of your own worthiness. I mean, um, how? listen, asking somebody their advice on, hey, you know, does my butt look good in this? dress or jeans. Oh, that's one thing, whatever. But if you obsess over people's opinions to the point where you change until you please someone, um, that's what you're doing. You're assigning other people to be judges of your own worthiness. In order for you to break free from insecurity and become more confident and self-assured, you need to first love yourself for being insecure. That's right. Love yourself for being who you are. Embrace your insecurities. Doesn't mean stay stagnant and stay there. It means embrace them and meet you, meet yourself where you are. It's like, you know, I don't care if you weigh 650 pounds. Love every fat ounce on your body while you're walking into the gym to address it. Um, in order for you to break free from insecurity, you have to be confident and self-assured. Um, like I just said, insecurity is like a megaphone from your inner being and it's blaring everywhere you go, every party you attend, every social engagement, everything you put on, everything. It's an internal megaphone reminding you of why you're not enough. Um, and it's screaming. This megaphone is screaming. Please love me. Please comfort me. Please accept me. Um, again, that's the internal dialogue for somebody that has insecurities. So like a crying child, it will not go away if you ignore it. And if you try to um, make it leave or scold it, it would become even more dis, uh, distressed and petulant, simply put. This is exactly what happens when you're trying to start a relationship. Um, and again, this could be starting a new relationship with yourself. You're trying to rebuild yourself after broken trust, broken relationships, whatever the case is, whether you're starting a relationship with somebody else or starting to create a new normal within yourself. If you haven't dealt with your insecurity first, it will certainly rear its head as soon as you try to get something going with a new you, a new normal with you or with somebody else. And this can even be a friend, a family member, what have you. Anytime you're creating new boundaries, a new you, um, these insecurities will come up um, and, and, and face it. What is 
familiar to us is comforting because it's familiar to us. Doesn't mean it's always healthy. It just means it's comfortable because it's familiar. Your inner child will feel threatened that you are diverting even more attention away from it. So instead, your inner child wants to be first, especially when you're involved with someone else. Um, and this includes yourself because you want to create a new you. The new you is not the old new and your insecurities are attached to the old you. The minute you make someone else a higher priority, your inner child will act out in the form of fears, clinginess, picking fights, and sab sabotaging the relationship. It's almost like a toddler at a store um, having a tantrum. Um, it's like trying to date when you have a small child. That child needs to feel safe, loved, and number one before trust in the new person, before trust you can give to that new person in your life. That's why if you're dating, the most important thing you can do for yourself, and again, dating somebody else or dating yourself or creating a new new person your relationship and your inner child must learn to accept fully who you are accept where you just like i said if you're 650 pounds accept that love who you are um but you can also work on your weight so love every fact of who you are because let's face it we don't give ourselves uh the majority of our insecurity our insecurities come from our childhood and then experiences in life built on those, build on those. So, um, you know, I want you to embrace, accept, acknowledge, validate, love your insecurity while you're saying, okay, we also need to go to the gym and build up these muscles of insecurity. Well, of security. Um, all right. It's uh, only when we find self-love that we can accept love from an equally empowered person, which is why I say we date on the level of our self-esteem. And when you increase your self-esteem, you date, you increase the prospects of those um, that you date because that's your energy will match their energy, like energy. Um, from this empowered place, you'll start showing up differently and people will respond to you differently. You know, I always say when people say, you know, why do I always end up dating these people? And why do I always end up this? And I always end up doing that. And I'll say, well, who's the common denominator? So change the characteristics of that common denominator that will change the person that will change the pool around you. And even if it doesn't change the pool around you, it'll change the expectations and the boundaries of those around you, which is healthy. Um, just quickly before I end this class, I wanted to give you a few practical ways to address insecurity. Number one, I know it's easier said than done, but simply stop overthinking. Just uh, the minute you start overthinking, Scream at the top of your lungs. I love me. Just stop overthinking. Shock your system into stop overthinking. Don't allow yourself to continually overthink negative thoughts or overreact uh, to negative behaviors. I love this song by Barbara Streisand. Uh, I forgot what it's called, but basically in the song, she says, there's no mistakes in life. There's just lessons to be learned. Um, oh, it's called Circle. That's the name of the song. And, and I like that because... Listen, we've all made butts of ourselves. I mean, do you remember the movie um, Dirty Dancing when What's-Her-Face says, I carried a watermelon? I mean, we've all had scenes like that. I mean, um, oh, my God, I'll share something with you that I know why I'm sharing with you. But just to show you that I'm human, too, I'm sure you already know that. I went to the funeral uh, and I saw my, my dear friend's aunt at the funeral and she just lost her sister. My dear friend's aunt just lost her sister. And I was at the funeral of her nephew. So my best friend's brother. And I walked up to the casket and she was there and completely had a, I carried a watermelon moment. And I said, uh, did you get this casket at the same place you got your sister's casket? And, and I, as I'm talking, I'm thinking, are you serious? Did that seriously just come out of your mouth? Um, so, and then on the way home, I was thinking, oh my God, I'm so embarrassed. I said that, but I was like, nope. No, 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 not even going to think of going there. It was done. It was a lesson to be learned. Moving on. Um, okay. So uh, next, set, a, set and accomplish achievable goals. I don't care if that's, you know, losing a pound. I don't care if that's cleaning out a drawer in your dresser. I don't care if that's, you know, uh, learning how to braid hair or, or learning how to plant a flower. Set achievable achievable goals and accomplish them. That will raise your self-esteem, raise your security. Challenge your internal dialogue. 
We all have an internal dialogue. Usually that comes from our childhood. Challenge it. We don't have to believe our, our parents when they said you were worthless. We don't have to believe our caretakers when they said you take up too much space or, you know, we didn't want you or whatever. The case. We don't have to forgive yourself for believing those things and then challenge your own dialogue. Because what happens is somebody says something to us once that's negative. We repeat it 400,000 times throughout our life. Got to challenge those things. Um, do a values audit and affirm those values. So whatever your values are, uh, take another look at them. And then bring them to the to the forefront. Say, these are my values. And then start living in those values. That'll increase your security and self-esteem. Keep good company. And listen, if you can't get rid of Aunt Tilda and Uncle Fred and all this other stuff, um, put some boundaries on there or, or, or have some tips and techniques at hand to make sure whatever they say and do bounces off you like a water on, on leaf, a dew on leaf, you know. Celebrate yourself celebrate yourself. What does this mean? That means walk by the mirror and give yourself a high five. That means reach around once in a while and say, dang, I am so proud of you. You are amazing. Give yourself a pat on the back. That means self-talk. You know, what does Dr. Debbie say all the time? You know, um, uh, that was adorable. Um, buy yourself something small, go to the dollar store and say, you know what, I'm going to buy myself a scented candle because I deserve a small little token of something just because I'm awesome. Period. I don't need an explanation. Um, so I hope this class did a little something to um, acknowledge and address maybe some of your insecurities and to erase maybe some of your, uh, to, to, to be mindful of raising some practical ways of raising your self-esteem and stuff. Um, because again, we function in life on the level of our self-esteem and our security. So hope it helped in some small way.